Good day, everybody. My name is Kristana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back, friends and family. We are gonna do a furniture painting video today. I realize that this piece is beautiful, but I am painting this for myself personally to go into my new home. We are a military family. We live in Germany and we will be moving to Maine probably next summer. And I already own a home there. We saved for years and years and years and we own a home. So I know where this is going to go and I want it to be a statement piece. And so I'm a super colorful person. I do like wood tones, but this is going to be for me, for my own home. And so this is my style. We are going to do some color on this piece and I am going to try to really bring out all of the details and things in this piece because I do feel like it's all hidden because it's all wood. It is hiding the beauty, the true beauty of this piece. So we are going to paint this piece, but I don't know if you saw the thrifting video that we did a while back. This is the one that has the parquet looking top. So that's going to be awesome. Probably going to ceruse it because you know, that's my thing now. So we are going to be working on this piece. It is right here behind me. Okay. It's beautiful. I know it's beautiful, but there's just so much about it that's hidden. And so I'm really, my goal is to just bring out everything in this piece more, really do it justice. So without further ado, let's get started. Again, I don't really know what color I'm gonna do. So let me ponder on that for a little bit. I know we did purple last week, but I am really, really digging that darker purple color. And I really, I don't have a lot of purple in my house, although I love that color. So I'm thinking we may do like a purple blue blend. I don't know, we'll see. All right. Stay here, stay here, don't go anywhere. Do not leave, don't leave. The first thing I did for this makeover was strip the top down. This is our par a parquet looking top. It's really, really cool. So we're gonna do a ceruse finish on this. I always use a chemical stripper instead of sanding the entire thing down. You can do whatever you want. Someone tried to tell me once that I don't need a chemical stripper, but I have carpal tunnel. I don't want to spend a bunch of time sanding. Plus taking off the top coat first is super helpful when you're sanding later. So this is bubbling. It is ready to come off. I'm going to take some steel wool and I'm going to go around the edges to get it off the edges. And then I'm going to take my plastic scraper scoop that I always use. And I am going to scoop this off. This is the top coat that was on there before. You can really see how it bubbled up. You can see kind of like a yellowish color. This is going to help get that first layer of protection off. So that way I can go in with my sandpaper and I can sand it down to lighten it up. So I'm scooping off all the excess after I let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once I'm done with the chemical stripper, I always neutralize it with mineral spirits. This is going to help neutralize it to stop the process of stripping and it's also going to get any kind of residual off. I am using a little scrubby pad to scrub it so that way it's easier for me to get any of that residual stripper off. I let the surface completely dry before I went in with my surf prep sander. So I'm using my three by four electric ray. And because this is a parquet top, I'm going to go with the grain of the wood. And so you can see me kind of going in a bunch of different directions. That's because I'm trying to stay with the grain when I am sanding. So I started with a 120 grit and then I'll go up to a 220 grit and I'm going to sand down the top until it's completely bare and it's a lighter wood.
This is an oak veneer, and so I'm going to do my ceruse finish on it. I say it's mine. It's not mine. I didn't create it, but I really like it, and I've been doing it a lot. I am going to take a stiff wire brush, and I'm going to deepen the grain. What I'm doing here is I'm just kind of cleaning out the wood grain of the oak, and this is going to allow that white wax to sit in there deeper to give it a higher contrast. Before I go over the top with my white wax, I am going to put a sealer on it. I am using Gator Hide, you can use whatever you want, but I'm doing a thin layer. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it will allow my white wax to wipe back much easier. So I'm just doing one thin layer of the Gator Hide and then I'm gonna allow it to fully dry before I go in with the white wax. And what I'm gonna do with the white wax is I am going to go with the grain to put it on and then go against the grain. And I'm also gonna do circles because I really want to get that white wax into that wood grain so that it's super deep in there so that when we wipe it back with the microfiber cloth, you can really see the contrast. So I'm gonna go in with the white wax now. You're gonna see me go with the grain, then go against the grain, then I'm gonna go in circles, and then I'm going to wipe in the opposite direction of the wood grain. So going against the wood grain to really push it in there, one final push in there, and then it is going to, you're gonna see it, it looks super cool. This piece isn't gonna have high traffic, so what I'm gonna do is after I'm completely done, I'm gonna go back in about 15, 20 minutes, buff that wax, and that will act as a sealer for the top. Now I'm gonna go in and clean the body with white lightning. So I have mixed it into a little spray bottle, and I'm going to spray it on the piece and wipe it away with a microfiber cloth. And then when I'm done doing that, I'm gonna go over it with clean water and a clean rag to get any residual off, that way we don't have any adhesion issues. I am just going to tell you right now that you need to trust the process going into what we are about to dive into. I am going to make a lime color. So I'm mixing Dixie Bell's Daisy, which is a bright yellow, and then I'm gonna mix their tree frog green. So it's gonna be about a one to two ratio. So two parts of the daisy and then one part of the tree frog green. And this is gonna create a lime green color that I want. Now, the other colors that I'm gonna be using the lime green is across it on the color wheel. So these are all complementary colors that we're going to be using on this piece. I'm gonna mix these together and it's gonna make a lime green color. Now, if you have a lime green paint, just use that. But I didn't have one on in hand, so I'm creating this lime green, which I've done before and I actually really like this color. Then I'm going to mix a texture medium into here, okay? So I'm gonna mix Dixie Belle Sea Spray into this and I'm gonna make it 
to where it's more thick than I normally do because what I'm going to be doing is almost doing a smear technique on this. I don't want just texture. I kind of want it to look like it was smeared on there so that it's not only bumpy texture, that sea salt texture, but it's also got a texture on it that looks like it has been wiped on, like smeared on. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So once I'm done mixing this all, it's going to be thicker than your brownie batter consistency that I usually have. I'm going to take a cheap chip brush and I'm going to scoop it out and I'm going to smear it on the piece and I'm going to dab it to make peaks, but I'm going to keep smearing it to smooth it out as much as I can, but not to the point where it's flat. I still want some texture on here. I allowed this texture to dry for 24 hours before I went over it with the next color, but I did put this all over the piece because this is going to show up later when we distress it. I'm going to recreate the purple color that we used a few weeks ago. So I am going to take Dixie Belle's Plum Crazy and Dixie Belle's Amethyst, and I'm going to mix a one for one ratio with those two colors to create that kind of electric violet color. So I'm going to mix that. And then I am going to put that on the piece in the corners. It really doesn't matter where you place these colors because they're all going to blend really nice. But I just kind of visualized it and placed it where I wanted. So I put the purple in all of the corners and on the edges and like the bottom of the piece. I will say that we are going to blend all of these colors together. So I'm only going to do a, f a medium layer, one medium layer of all of these colors. So normally when I blend, I do a base coat and then I let it dry and do another base coat and blend. But this is going to be a more messy boho blend. So be cognizant of that when you are going to paint this. If you're not ready to sit down and put all these layers on and then go right into blending, then wait until you have time to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the purple all in the areas that I want. Then I'm gonna use antebellum blue, which is like a teal color, and I'm gonna put that next to all the purple. And then I'm gonna take palmetto and I'm gonna put that in all the areas that are left.
Once I've put all of the paint where I want it to go, this is still wet. This is the first layer, it is still wet, but I have my mister bottle and so I'm going to mist over the top and I'm gonna take a clean, dry, neutral brush and I am going to start blending them all together, going vertical, horizontal, circles, whatever I have to do to blend these three colors together. Remember, this is gonna be kind of a mm, boho, rough, rustic type blend. So it's not gonna be perfect. And that's why we're not putting a bunch of layers of paint on first before we go into blending. So we're going right into the blending. Make sure that you have your mister bottle cause that's the key. This paint should still be damp anyways, but then using the mister bottle will keep it activated so that way you can blend everything together. Once this is completely dry, I'm gonna go in with my three x four electric ray in a super fine sandpaper. So you're gonna to wanna to use like a 220 or above, and I'm going to sand down the entire piece. What this is gonna do is it's gonna bring everything together. It's gonna to expose that lime green underneath and it's just gonna pull everything together. And like I said, these colors are all complementary, So it's gonna look really, really great when it is all sanded and done and everything's coming together, but we're not done yet. I will be using black wax on this piece, so I'm gonna spray Easy Peasy Spray Wax on here first. It's a clear wax. This is gonna allow that black wax to wipe back easier, and I am going to wait for this to dry for about an hour after I put it on. So I'm gonna spray it on, rub it in with a microfiber cloth, wait about an hour, and then I'm gonna go in with black wax, and I'm going to wax the entire piece. I'm gonna put the wax on, and I'm gonna wipe it back right away, and then it's going to deepen the colors and really bring everything together even more. Once I'm done with the black wax, I am going to finish everything off with a gold gilding wax. And that way, remember in the beginning I said I really want these accents to show and I really want to just do justice to this piece. So remember, this piece is gonna be in my house. I love it, it's gonna be a statement piece. It may not be everybody's thing or cup of tea or whatever, but you can use whatever colors you want to create this look. 
and this gold wax is really just going to tie everything for a final tie together. I know I said blending it's going to tie it together, sanding it's going to tie it together, black wax is going to tie it together, but this really, the gold wax is really the final touch on this entire piece. Hey everybody, so this piece is done. This video is done. I hope you enjoyed that. This is the final piece. You know I'm gonna have, you know I'm gonna have pictures up. Remember, everything I use is always in the description below. Hit the see more tab, it'll take you there. That is it. Thank you guys so much. Happy creating. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. And I will see you guys next time. Have an amazing weekend and see you guys later. Bye. Oh my love You're such a fragile thing I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm it all And oh my love About the cold just yet. The trees haven't started to shed. Just feel the summer sun as it warms our bed. I'm trying